Hey, Fit Heads. Today we talk with Luke Ferdinand and Rick McMullen, the co-founders of Alleviate, the home of the Arch Massager, which they invented. I think I'm out of focus. There we go. <laughs> so this thing has solved plantar fasciitis for lots of people, which is really common, but it's also great for foot health in general. This was an interesting episode on foot health, which is something not a lot of people think about, but they should. Well, it's one of those things where people don't think about it until it hurts. And then suddenly right. they're like, wow, I can't even walk. You know, it, 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 this is a terrible simile metaphor, but it's like your teeth, you know, you kind of, you know, you don't really care. You brush your teeth, you floss, whatever. But then once you have tooth pain, it's like debilitating. That's sort of the feeling I get with foot pain. Like when I had my ankle thing, it was crazy. I couldn't walk and like couldn't exercise, so depressed, blah, blah, blah. So this was a fun one to go over foot health and, and I guess more so to the idea that it's not just, uh, I forget what he called it, but it's not just reactionary. There's things you can do to prophylactic. strengthen your prophylactic, pro, pre, uh, pro, propriactic. <laughs> <laughs> Proprioceptive. Yeah. But, you know, to, to the idea of there's things I can do to strengthen or better my foot health that will then maybe sort of prevent possible injury or, or things I should be aware of that maybe I'm hurting my foot and so, you know, one of those yeah. like tiny little a thousand paper cuts and then suddenly it's, it's a big bad cut. This is, I mean, foot health is something it's, uh, I hadn't thought about until I messed up my ankle or my heel right. or whatever it was. I still don't even know what it was. Yeah. Well, when they said in the episode, well, people foam roll. That's really common now, but you never foam roll your feet. You know, what do you do when your foot hurts? You just, that's, there's not a thing to do. They have now the yeah. thing to do. So yeah. if you're doing it to maintain your current health, or if you're one of the 1 million to possibly 3 million people that have plantar fasciitis, definitely stick around for this episode because I mean, Luke was helping people in person and then they created this thing so that they could help as many people as possible in their own homes do it themselves. Welcome to Total Fitness. Serious fitness for not so serious people. Luke and Rick, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited for our foot episode. So uh, what are your scores on WikiFeet? <laughs> Solid four Joke's and not half. landed. All right. Solid <laughs> Max, four and a half. Max <laughs> definitely has a WikiFeet profile. Do you not? Do, do you guys know what Wikifeed is? Absolutely not, but I am going to Google that very soon. Oh. Don't. Yeah, I think uh, I'm not on this computer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a website that uh, people sort, it's like crowdsourced pictures oh, no. of your feet. So if you ever go to the beach and Instagram, it'll end up on Wikifeed and then people write, write your feet. Anyway, I didn't mean to actually get on that from the start. Let's actually talk about foot health. <laughs> which is probably also something that a lot of people have not heard of. Yeah. From also top. I, my computer and my internet has never had an issue until we mentioned the W I K I feet. So there is some kind of listening going on from the interwebs that doesn't agree with this near here. So <laughs> apologies. I'm going to look that up. All right. Well, welcome back. Um, Let's actually talk about foot health because that's also something that not a lot of people have heard about. And yeah, this is a whole like a new category of things that it feels like I should be concerned about now. Is it not? Uh, during COVID, I think they called it um, like pandemic foot or something. There's a lot yeah. of people that were sitting for long periods of time. Uh, so like catchphrases, uh, we've got to be scared of everything these days, but maybe being scared of problems with your feet is uh, something that we can help avoid. Um, so over a million Americans every year have plantar fasciitis. Um, it afflicts a lot of people. That's just the reported numbers. So we as a team um, saw an opportunity to try and help a lot of people who have foot dysfunction and plantar fasciitis and um, both prevent it as well as um, help treat it. So if you think about the function of your feet every day, you've got an arch, your arch rises and falls. Um, if you're walking on a hard surface, that complex has to become quite soft to absorb all of the load. If you're 
walking on a soft surface, that complex has to become quite stiff. So if you're walking on different surfaces, um, you're asking your feet to do completely different things. And not many people think about that until they have some kind of injury, overtrain, overload, overexert, just over. Um, so if there are um, variations in your training or an increase in load, some people can suffer from a condition called plantar fasciitis or arch type pain. Um, and we have developed a system or a strategy to uh, both acute sufferers and chronic sufferers to help them have a clear pathway to resolving that issue or injury. So, yeah, it sounds like overloading would be like what gets you to that point, but that Pandemic foot sounds like nobody was using their feet. So how, how is that related? Rick, you want to take this one? I'll take this one. Uh, so overload, overload occurs when load exceeds capacity. And if you're sitting around in a pandemic, uh, your capacity to handle load is going down. So while you're, while you're sitting, you're yeah. getting, you know, if, especially for long periods of time, you're getting weaker. You can almost, you know, if, if, there, if, uh, if for some reason we traveled by bench pressing, and uh, people <laughs> sat around not bench, <laughs> and people sat around not bench pressing for a year on Zoom calls, and then they decided to go out and bench press ten thousand reps a day, uh, and and pick up pickleball. That uh, <laughs> we would have we would have pandemic shoulder or pandemic pec, but because uh, feet is the way that we ambulate, and uh, that the pandemic caused a lot of people to become sedentary. They both so they both no, but, but in all seriousness, they both they both gained weight. Um, which puts more load through the tissues of your feet and the tissues of their feet became uh, atrophied through, through, through non-use. And then as people started to sort of like literally emerge from the cave, uh, <laughs> there was this rampant, uh, <laughs> the, the second, the second pandemic, the pandemic, no one's talking about of, of foot injuries. And it's not just in like, you know, marathoners and, and uh, you, know, you know, other, other athletes. It's like people who just walk their dog, people who, who uh, are walking, you know, go for walks, go for hikes. Um, things that you think might be mundane if your feet can't handle uh, the load and you're putting the, and continually putting that load through your foot, you, you will develop, uh, if you're, if you're lucky, you'll develop sore feet. And if you're unlucky, you'll develop chronic plantar fasciitis. Yeah. So what? what a million people you said? Well, there's it's yeah, got to be more because I had it and I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it, there's the, it depends where you get your stats. Like I've seen stats that say one, I've seen stats that say three million Americans, and I've seen research papers that say that the number of reported cases relative to the number of actual cases is one in ten. So, like, depending on wow. which which study you believe, it's either one or thirty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, either regardless, like you know, you go to a go to a room that has. 20 30 people in it and ask uh who's had who's had plantar fasciitis and knows it by that name someone will raise their hand and then if you ask like why you know, do i feel like you've done their, that had their dogs be barking um in a, in a way that's been really bothering bothersome you know most people will will raise their hand but what uh okay what's a plantar fascia uh, so your plantar fascia is a kind of like a fibrous band of tissue that runs from your heel through your midfoot. Um, acts a little bit like, uh, yeah, Rick showing you on his hand, or yeah, I thought on, he was waving. I'm, no, I'm being a <laughs> foot with my hand. Um, and it doesn't have uh, a blood supply. It's not elastic. It's not like a muscle. So it's just there to sustain load. Um, effectively acts like a spring. So down and up. And... If you're walking on differing surfaces, as I mentioned before, or you start really ramping up volume, um, something that's not contractile, so it can't contract or extend, just responds to the load that it's given. Um, that can get pretty grumpy pretty quickly. And if you think about going to the gym, uh, Max, obviously with no sleeves, you've been a few times. Um, More than Ali. <laughs> <laughs> if you think it, <laughs> I love the competition. Uh, if you think about going to the gym, you're essentially creating detriment to tissue, right? And progressively, so you're improving the amount of load that you're doing by stressing it, whether it be strengthening uh, concentrically or eccentrically. 
So the tissue that you're stressing or loading becomes more tolerable to load. Um, and so therefore you can improve the amount of resistance or increase, sorry, the amount of resistance that you put through that uh, tissue. If tissue is non-contractile, if it's just like a thick band of rope or sinewy type of that chickeny stuff that you don't like eating, um, if it's like that and you just start loading it and you haven't progressively stressed it, uh, it's going to get grumpy. You have scarring that happens, little bits of scar tissue, and then if you don't rest or restore that tissue, um, it will build into lumpy kind of tissue. And so when I, as a physical therapist, see somebody's foot with uh, plantar fasciitis, often in the heel, like you rub your thumb across it and it feels like a little golf ball's in there. It's not too pretty. Uh, grimy type of tissue. Yeah, it's just, um, it's not fun. So we have to get rid of that uh, problematic scar tissue and rebuild some um some tissue that can sustain load. Well, so like I was talking to Ali, so I know Ali's really into barefoot training. Um, and right. Like you, you, and you don't just train you, like you, you go on walks barefoot, you lift barefoot, you, you do yeah. a lot of stuff barefoot. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought this up before me because yeah, now I'm not that person, but yes, let's talk about barefoot training. Well, I went on a barefoot hike this morning and two mornings okay. ago and I will lift barefoot. So I want to, I want to link these things, right? Because, because we're talking about load and we're talking about, uh, the, the plantar fascia is not a look, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the, the fascia itself is not a muscle. Correct. Yeah. And it's not a tendon. It's like this, like woven stuff in between the muscle and the tendon. So we're talking about loading, you know, muscles are supposed to handle loads, but the, but the itis here. So Luke talked about tissue being grumpy. Uh, itis is a fancy word for grumpy. So plantar fasciitis is grumpy plantar fascia. Uh, and so when you overload the musculature of the foot, what gets grumpy is the plantar fascia, plantar fasciitis, grumpy plantar fascia. And when Luke was talking about touching tissue and that having that golf ball effect, like Ali, when you, I would, I would guess that if we rubbed your heels, I'm not going to, and I, I guess I can't uh, right now because we're on the internet. But if I, but if I were to, I, don't, I, I suspect that because your feet are very strong from training barefoot, that your tissue would not feel grumpy because your tissue is strong and healthy. Like the, you, you probably have very healthy feet because you, you train barefoot. Somebody who either uh, is ramping up their running volume too quickly, or even somebody who starts barefoot training and just ramps their volume too quickly is likely to develop plantar fasciitis by overloading the tissues of their feet faster than they can heal and become stronger. And then you get the, the itis, the grump. Yeah, because you talked about varying um, types of walking, right? Hard and soft surfaces. It, how does that relate to like always wearing shoes? Because so if you go from always wearing shoes to not wearing shoes, the barefoot running, and I don't say this disrespectfully, but like craze uh, that was around in like the the early two thousands. I was working in Manhattan and saw bunch of stress fractures people were like oh i got some vibrams man i'm gonna run up the west side highway or uh i'm gonna run by the river and they just go out and run and run and run and their body wasn't ready to tolerate that amount of stress barefoot because they'd been used to running in shoes right um so if you progress towards something cool i think that's great but on that journey of progression, similar to people foam rolling or getting massage or doing any kind of restorative work for their bodies when you're lifting, stretching, whatever, um, that's what we're suggesting that people do uh, both as a preventative measure and a restorative measure to try and take some of that uh, scar tissue out of their feet or the tension out of their feet. Um, so as Rick said, if we were to take your feet and you go for a hike, however long it was, and then you put somebody who's not done any barefoot work next to you and go on the same hike barefoot, um, they're not going to feel too flash the next day. More than likely they may get through. Okay. But if they continue to progress that load and don't, uh, do it systematically, um, they're going to have an aggravation in their feet and, that is usually causative or usually leads towards plantar fasciitis. So let's say, so let's say that I was, so I weigh about 220 pounds 
That's a little more than I should. Luke is smirking. I can see him. He's fighting. It's all back. muscle. I can tell. Yeah, I, I'm wearing a half zip. I'm wearing a half zip for yeah. Max is wearing no sleeves. I'm 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 Ricky half zip. So, but 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 the point is, I'm a big dude. Um, I how tall are you? Uh, I'm six two. There you go. Yeah, that's Bang. that's that's what it is. Flex. Like, I'm really I just I just remember that this is going to be on the internet and people are going to listen to it. <laughs> um, the point, but 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 I'm I'm a large guy and I don't train barefoot. I wear shoes most of the time. I work in an office. So if I were to go on a barefoot hike with Allie, Luke, how many times do you think I'd have to go on a barefoot hike with Allie before I would develop acute, at least acute plantar fasciitis? Uh, uh, because, because of just like how much I'm stressing the tissue. Because uh, basically what I'm saying is my feet are not as strong as Allie's feet. Yeah, no, just knowing you, Rick, I think it might be a couple. A you can get of, through one. Yeah, a couple of hikes for sure. But yeah, the, after the second one, I think you might feel a little bit banged up. But again, if you're progressively doing uh, like a duration build up, a volume build up, um, mitigating those factors um, along the way, and then doing some restorative work, um, the chances of you uh, creating dysfunction are less. And, and where, where we kind of specialize in this, in this whole world. So, okay. So like, if I go on a few hikes with Allie, my feet are untrained, uh, barefoot hikes with Allie, my feet are untrained. After a few of them, I will start, my feet will start to get sore. And if I keep doing that, my feet will stay sore. And at some point, uh, if I keep doing that, the, the I'll develop plantar fasciitis and it will become chronic. So like, like, uh, Luke, you know, like what's, what's the difference between chronic plantar fasciitis and acute plantar fasciitis in terms, in terms yeah. of the like anatomy and, and what it, what it feels like. So it's just the duration of it. Usually a rough term is if it's been going on for longer than three to six months, that's chronic. Um, and so when you have that chronic scar tissue build up, and that's essentially what plantar fasciitis is, um, it's a lot harder to break down and your body can't uh, get past the scar tissue. So Max, if you were to go out and um, obviously like you're lifting heavy things and stuff, uh, and if you were to do that barefoot and you have a small aggravation in your feet, chances are within a day or two, it's gone away, right? Like no drama. Um, but if your foot's grumpy or pissed off and then you go out and you hike for 30 or 40 minutes and you do that again later that day and then the day thereafter for a longer period of time, it's going to get pissed off and is your body going to be able to keep up with the insults that you're throwing at it? Probably not. Uh, so that's what would tend to lead to uh, scar tissue buildup and scar tissue buildup is what we call plantar fasciitis in the base of your foot. Yeah, so if you have that scar tissue, I guess it sounds like and you start training correctly, it's still not going to work because you're training scar tissue versus like clean muscle, clean muscle. Yeah. So if you think about like normal tissue, normal tissue kind of looks like linear stuff, right? Um, some people think about it like toothpicks, like lined up toothpicks. And if you tear some tissue, um, if we zoom in on this part, it kind of ends up looking like this dysfunctional, non-organized tissue. Um, so that's why you can feel the little bumps in scar tissue often. There are some exercises that you can do to restore uh, or prolif proliferate, sorry, new tissue. Eccentric exercise or negatives, as some people call them, um, can help in the growth of new tissue. It can also help mitigate some of those tendonitis, tendinopathies. People have different names for them. Um, but... If you combine that with work on the tissue to break that dysfunctional tissue down, whether it be manual therapy from a physical therapist, chiro, osteo, whoever, um, massage, that can help expedite the return to activity and also break down that dysfunctional tissue too. So um, you're in a better position to start loading it with that negative exercise. So tell us about the manual therapy that you do then. Um, so part, we have three parts to our system. This is where I'm going to get into like the, the nuts and the bolts of kind of what we do. So if you, if you take like a, somebody that comes in with plantar fasciitis, traditionally they can't walk on their heels, uh, and bare feet. Usually they can't walk on the insides of their feet. And some people can't walk on the outsides of their feet or their tiptoes, but, but walking on your heels, like you'll just see the wince come on and people are like, yeah, nah, nah, I don't want to do that. 
So it becomes really, really painful for them to walk. So they need a cushy type shoe. Okay, cool. So how do we get people back to being able to walk on their heels again? Um, as a physical therapist, I do three things. So I would tape this person's foot to try and decrease the stress that's going through it. Um, I would do manual therapy, like work with my hands or work with an instrument to try and break down the tissue um, and break down that scar tissue. And then number three, once the, the foot, the plantar fascia is ready for it, we'd start doing some kind of restorative or functional exercise to build that tissue back up to what it should be. So we're unloading it with the taping, we're breaking that problematic tissue down, and then number three, um, we're progressively loading it as we've talked about, whether you're going on hikes barefoot or whatever it might be if you're going and lifting at the gym. So that's what I would do as a physical therapist. And what we've tried to do at Alleviate um, and what we've been successful in doing because we're capturing a massive amount of data that shows that we are, is that tape job that I would do We've invented a, um, a foot brace, which mimics that taping job and decreases people's pain when they put it on. So that's number one. So decrease the pain. Cool. Number two, instead of using a tool or my thumb, uh, we've got this beautifully aesthetic um, high and low mountain um, foot grinder, foot massager that acts like some people would call it Graston therapy, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization, gua sha. There's a ton of different terms to break that tissue down. And you can put this thing on the floor and you can do it yourself. So instead of somebody else beating the living bejesus out of your foot and you like getting full face sweats and <laughs> um, asking for a thick piece of leather, just depending what in, whatever you're into, <laughs> you can like do it. this to your the you, you can do this to yourself. So you can put it on the floor and you can gently start to rub and break down that tissue. And then number three that goes with both of the other parts that I've just talked about is we have a um, an exercise program that you get talked through. It has six phases, um, and we progressively load phase by phase by phase by phase to get you back to the activities that you cherish and enjoy. Sweet to have diesel feet. That's it. And we don't just focus on feet. Like you got to start with the foot because every journey begins with a step. That was bad. Oh. Oh, I'm going to own it. I'm going to own it. Yeah. Um, but we start with the foot and then we start to work on the ankle and then we bring the whole chain. So it's basically like restoring the um from the heel strike right through to the hip uh and that's as you go through all the phase of phases of our program but like double yeah. click on that whole chain thing i think that's super i mean i think these guys will think that's interesting too like uh yeah the whole the whole the whole chain thing so what what is what do you mean uh yeah so We've all gone to shoe stores and been told that oh, some people will say you pronate or you supinate or you, you do whatever. And so, okay, cool. You get yourself into a shoe and it fixes that. Yeah, not so much because your body weight's probably like a little bit more than what the shoe can tolerate, right? Uh, and then your shoes wear down. So movement at the ankle can affect your foot, which can cause you foot pain. Uh, if you have people that have knock knees or bow legs, that can also stress the foot. So that's like further down the chain. So the, uh, there was this amazing song, the ankle bones connected to the, yeah. But as you go further up, it's relative to the joint below. So the knee can cause torsion or dysfunction at the ankle. If you're falling out at the hip and you're weak at the hip, that can potentially cause um, weakness and problems in the ankle and or the foot. So what we try and do is identify that people have pain in their heels. Cool break that tissue down, strengthen it, decrease the stress with the brace, and then our program will take you through and restore your foot and ankle, how your knee works in relation to your foot and ankle, how your hip works in relation to your knee in relation to your foot and ankle. So we're not just going for like, oh, this is your symptom. Let's just try and fix that. We're trying to improve the whole chain, which the shank, the leg, all the way down the system. Yeah, and then you're also doing it yourself, which is cool. Can you talk a little bit about that, like, active versus passive? 
Oh, okay. Ali, that's fantastic. So um, <laughs> if you're looking there, we can kind of loosely define people in two different ways, right? Like there's, a, there's an active participant in healthcare or in their own rehabilitation. That's when you participate in things. You do the exercise, you, um, you stress your body in the right ways, but you do the things that you know are going to help you to get back to the things that you love. So that would be actively doing the massage on your foot, actively participating in the program, and then I guess actively putting on the passive brace. But if you're a passive person <laughs> that is a little bit more like I, I just want a shot or I just want to feel better, you put on our foot brace and it decreases your pain or discomfort. So we've got, we're incorporating both active participants and those are the people that we're really, really interested in helping because those are the folks that will get resolution from their injury. Um, and passive people may well get resolution, but <clears throat> once it's reached three months, six months, the chance of you being a passive participant in your care and just wearing a boost, a boot or a brace or getting a shot, um, chances are that your pain is not going to go away. So we really encourage our uh, consumers, participants to be active participants in their care, grind their feet on the massager, break down that scar tissue, starts off feeling a little bit weird, maybe sometimes a little bit painful, but then you start to enjoy it. Um, <laughs> and then from there, actively participate, actively participate in the things that you know will help your foot. And that is our six phased restorative exercise program. And I want to hear like, Luke, you riff on this too, but I, I think like I having before I worked with Luke, I, I've, I'm, I, I am, I'll say it. I am American. I'm from, uh, I'm from America and uh, I, what's that? <laughs> yeah, you, you heard it here first. Uh, and I'd only been exposed to the way that we treat things in American sports medicine. And I, I don't even know if we covered this, but I met Luke when I was his patient. Uh, that's, that's, that's how we met. And, and, oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd had this like decade long, uh, experience with, with knee pain that ended up being foot pain. And anyway, that just, that, that just like long, long story. That's totally irrelevant here, but, um, seems so I, relevant. So we have a podcast and they're long. <laughs> okay. okay. In long form content, uh, between between Pittsburgh and Boston, where I where I lived uh, while I was while I was going through this, I was I had access to you know top quality care. Uh, in theory, like Pittsburgh has a great sports medicine and University of Pittsburgh great med school, and Boston is like the hub of of medical you know everything in in, in the U.S. But Luke's point about passive treatments is really interesting because if once plantar fasciitis becomes chronic, what we have available in the American system are escalating passive treatments. So once your plantar fasciitis becomes chronic, the first thing they'll put, they'll do is they'll put you in a little splint that'll bend your feet back. Right. And that's like, I'm not, and I'm not throwing shade on any, any, anything that works. If it works for you, it works. And then like, I'm not going to say that, that our, our system is the only system that works. But again, if the, if the tissue has become chronic, if it's become scarred, all you're doing is stretching scarred tissue. And so if that fails, the next thing they'll do is they'll put you in a custom orthotic. Great. Now you've got a custom orthotic that is supporting scarred tissue, but you're continuing to put load through it. You're continuing to build scarred tissue through that foot. Okay. So the orthotics will work for a bit and then they'll stop working. So now what do we do? We escalate to the next level. We start using cortisone shots. Cortisone shots will relieve pain immediately, but cortisones are literally steroids. Uh, you know, an NSAID like Advil is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Cortisone is a steroidal anti-inflammatory. The reason we tell bodybuilders not to use steroids is because they damage tissues, but we, but we give it, but we give it to like regular people uh, to solve their pain again, because these are, these are the, these are the treatment options that we have available in our system. And then if that doesn't work, if that fails to work, surgery is the, is the escalation that goes beyond that. There's something also called, called shockwave therapy that's in there. But the point is, these are all, these are all therapies where a doctor is doing something to you, the patient. And if it doesn't, get you if it doesn't kind of break this cycle of our tissue buildup you have to make a choice you either have to escalate to the next level of passive treatment which is going to be more expensive more invasive and have long-term effects and also not heal the root cause of the problem or you have to stop doing something 
that you enjoy doing that is causing the damage in the first place. So I can't even tell you how many people I know who say, oh, I used to have plantar fasciitis, but it got better. And I say, what'd you do to fix it? They said, oh, well, I stopped doing marathons. Well, you know, right. that's acceptable if you don't really love doing marathons. But if you really love doing marathons, that's hardly a win. You know, if that's, if that's the activity that gets you excited, if, if it's your job to be a firefighter and the way you fixed your plantar fasciitis is you, <laughs> you, st you stop being a firefighter, that's hardly a win. So, you know, the, the, like Luke's point about the, and I guess, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm now I'm, I stole Luke's riff a little bit, but like, uh, the, the, is that, that's like not how they do things in New Zealand. Like, are, have, have, does it, do anyone do shots and surgeries and stuff in New Zealand? Yeah, they do. But you try and go through an active restorative program prior to getting there. So it just makes sense to try and load the tissue progressively whilst you're breaking it down rather than immediately jump into a shot and or surgery. Um, technically it's kind of cheaper because the physical therapists are not paid as uh, handsomely as some of the people that are doing the surgeries. That's another podcast, Ellie. Thanks for having us back for that one. <laughs> um, and so if you're looking at like a patient centered model, um is cortisone in the best interest of some people for some people sure and some people get resolution from from their cortisones so one and done but um a lot of people do not and so once you get into that cycle which is ultimately what rick is saying um we've seen i think the longest one 13 years a lady um had plantar fasciitis for 13 years we give her a massager because this is when we're just first starting out and uh rick and i did film some um exercises on the the front porch sent her those links and she was like wow this is the first thanksgiving in the last however many years uh 13 years that i've been able to cook next to my children and she was like oh that's an amazing story right and that kind of story is um happening time and again and uh it's just that's not cool it's not acceptable that people are continually in this level of pain and then they shut down the activities that they want to do walking the dog cooking with family at thanksgiving who knows what it is but um she also uh lived just outside boston super super smart lady amazingly intuitive and she'd just never been given the direction so we try and take ownership of people's pain journey and say if you do this you will get there not just like oh jump into our program and we'll see how we go that's uh that's bs like we want to give you goals um and we want to give you resolution to your dysfunction and so i think that <clears throat> uh any excellent physical therapist will try and take ownership of their patient's pain excellent chiro excellent osteo whoever it is rather than just say well let's see how we go over the course of the next little while um, and we're trying to do that at Alleviate as well. Um, when people are onboarded, we get you to do a series of tests and then you retest yourself a week later. Are you getting better, worse, or kind of staying the same? And um, if you use our system, you'll see that your pain scores are decreasing. And that's the super cool part about what we're doing. Uh, numbers in the hundreds of people are showing us that the further stage they move into the system, oh, I've got lots of hand motions, uh, <laughs> the less pain that they're having, right? So if your pain starts here and it drifts down over the course of phase one, phase two, phase three, you're winning. Um, and that data is, uh, is something that we're super proud of. And we're proving that the system works as well as if people are adherent slash active participants, um, they can really, own their own pain journey because once you get into a chronic pain cycle it's shit um it affects your life it affects your mood it affects everything not sure if i can use that language on the podcast um <laughs> but it's really bad once you're in the pain cycle and you start avoiding things you start saying you can't do things and then that just continues to capitulate um and as we all know uh taking care of your body can definitely help with um uh keeping a more balanced lifestyle can you give us a couple of examples of moves to strengthen your feet or stretch them or what what, what do you what is your like the first thing you give to everybody um 
so the, as a physical therapist, like I would probably differ slightly from um, things that I would do on the program because you kind of you're trying to be as uh, unique for that person as possible. But what we try and do at Alleviate is just work on the foot muscles themselves first. So I'm going to go off on a long. We've got we've got a long time, Ellie and Max. Right? <laughs> it's a podcast. Yes. <laughs> People are in their cars. In traffic, listening to this in traffic oh well, hopefully really? you're in la because like traffic's really bad out there apparently well what i'm worried about is people are on the treadmill oh yeah interesting that's a good one so uh, as soon as you have pain at any region of your body um your senses for that part or that region of your body are diminished slightly and i'm going to give you a uh, an example so if i say to you max can you hold out a 10 pound weight with your hands and your shoulders straight out in front of you for those people that are listening in the car. Um, and Max says, yep, that's fine. No problem. Cause he's got big arms. And then somebody, not me punches him in the arm as hard as they possibly can. Ow, sore, you get a dead arm. Right. And then I say to Max, Hey, can you hold that 10 pound weight straight out again? And he's like, nah, cause I've got a dead arm. Wait three or four minutes. Okay. Pain goes away. You can hold it out again. Max is back to being strong. Well, that's not really true. You didn't go from being strong to being weak to being strong. Pain inhibited the musculature, right? So dead arm doesn't equal weakness. A temporary stinger or dead arm or whatever you call it is just that will pass. But if you think about having chronic pain at a shoulder where you can't lift that up, now, when you go to do that movement again, your body is apprehensive. So you've got fear avoidance behavior. Uh, you will have some weakness start to come on, number two. And so your body kind of forgets how to do that movement well. If we fast forward and take that down to your foot, um, all of those little bones in your feet, if you're avoiding walking on your foot or your heel because it's painful, all of those little bones and joints in your feet We've just talked about one joint, which is the shoulder. Think about all of those other little joints in your feet. They're not turned on the right way. They're not, it's called proprioception or the knowledge of where your, um, your joints are in space. So we start there. We start with some very easy balance activities that you can start to understand where your foot is, some control. Um, and then we start loading <clears throat> um, very quickly. We start loading that plantar fascia eccentrically. So we're trying to restore and or build up um, new fibers uh, in your foot. And often for the majority of people, eccentric exercise is pain free when you're doing it through your foot. But if you're starting to do concentric, which is the shortening or contraction type exercise, it can often be painful. So we're trying to um calf raises so if you're going up onto your toes we're doing the opposite of those uh, we're doing calf lowerings and that will help not only stretch out your plantar fascia but create some eccentric stress in the foot the ankle the achilles um, and that will help decrease part of that pain slash discomfort that you're having progressively the longer that you do that type of exercise so we're not only focusing on just that band of tissue but we're focusing on essentially awakening the joints, um, giving you better control so that when your heel hits the ground, your foot knows what it's doing instead of dead arm where it's kind of switched off and it has been for a long period of time. Don't know if that was too deep or if it explained the um, question, but hopefully it did. Well, look, you went straight like, uh, you know, uh, American American politician and and did everything but directly answer the question. So Max said, what is the, what is the first thing that you give? I'm, I'm, he's upset with me now. Uh, no, no, no. You're good. <laughs> but, but you know, the question is like, you know, like what, what is the first thing that you give people? And the, the phase one of the exercise program is we have you stand on one foot for ten seconds at a time, holding on to something. So, like, I'm, I'm, well, you can't see. I don't know it, it, if I make my angle camera angle much worse. It, it, okay. So we have you stand on your foot for ten seconds at a time, but but holding on to something for for balance. It's not a balance exercise. It's a proprioceptive exercise. And then we have you do eccentric calf raises where you go up on two feet and then down on one foot. Now, when we recommend this and we like a lot of our, of our, they're, we don't, they're not patients. We're not a medical provider with their customers are, 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 many of them are serious athletes. They're runners, they're lifters, they're tennis players. And 
they're like, that's a joke. Like standing on, <laughs> standing on one foot supported for 10 seconds at a time is a joke. I run marathons. But then they, they discover that they actually are not as good at standing on one foot as they thought they might be. And then you go, you have this, you have this aha moment. That's like, wait a minute, holy crap. If I can't stand, if I, if I have the weeble wobbles while I'm standing on one foot, holding on to something for balance, yet I am going out and running for six miles at a time. Like you start to think about, okay, those weeble wobbles that you have in the, in the, in the single foot, 10 second stand are multiplied by the, the force of every time your foot hits the ground. No wonder people develop chronic pain, pain issues from, from running. It, it's like, if you don't, it's almost like if you don't get the fundamentals, right. This is where the, the whole, and Luke's talking about the whole, the whole chain, like your weeble wobbles from, from standing there, they could be a weakness in your foot, but it could be a weakness in your hip. It's actually causing you to, the, the fact that we don't have a vertical camera angle here, you guys are missing out on <laughs> so <laughs> much, <laughs> so <laughs> much, but, but, but really those are, those are the first two is the eccentric calf raise and the single leg stand. And then over the course of this six phase, what we get you to is we get you to doing the eccentric calf raise where you're, you're dropping your, your ankle, or your, your heel below parallel. So we start you on the floor and we get you to dropping below. And then with the single leg stand, we get you all the way to a tree pose like you do in yoga. And, you know, for the extra challenge, we get you to a tree pose where you're sort of looking up. So you're taking the ability to have visual cues out of the equation. I'd throw up. Uh, nope. What's that? <laughs> I would throw well, up. You, no, you, but, you, but didn't you do phase six and you, and you, you were like phase six is a cakewalk. Well, okay. Yes. I tried your phase six. Um, but I didn't think about my stability and my weeble wobbling. I just thought about how I do calf raises with this, these weights on my back. And I'm like, what is, what is that? That how do those compare? But I need to go back and like really analyze if I'm functionally strong, but doing it in a, in a way that's going to mess up my chain. Well, it, it, I, I mean, again, I, I, my suspicion, I don't know, Luke, tell me what you think, but like, I think because of the amount of training that you do, and if you're doing barefoot hikes, I would not be shocked to learn that like you actually have pretty good mechanics. So, so Ali did Luke, Ali oh. did the, the 90 second foot, on the step exercise without much difficulty. That's a pretty difficult exercise. So that's an exercise where you're standing with like just your toes on the edge of a step and you're just sort of standing there as though you're standing on the ground and you do that for 90 seconds. And if you have any sort of pronation or supination, that is going to be extremely, extremely challenging. So we, we progress you there and it takes, it takes a while for most people to get there. And even most people after several weeks, I, the, the strongest my feet have ever been, it's still, I don't look forward to doing 90 second stands with my, my feet <laughs> hanging off the step. So if you're, if you're listening to this in a gym, for those listening at home, if you're listening to this in a gym, try, try finding any, any sort of step, uh, or even like, you know, I'm, a, I'm Max, on, the edge do it on your chair. counter. Um, <laughs> putting, putting just your, your forefoot, the first third of your foot on the step and standing there as though you're standing on the floor with, with one foot for 90 seconds without stopping. And for, I mean, what is it like Luke for how, how soon do most people start to feel like, Oh yeah. I mean, like most people are feeling that tension in their calf start to really build at about 30 seconds at 45 to 60 seconds. It's like, well, there's a lot of tension in my calf and getting close to 90 seconds is most people can't do that initially. Um, and just for those people out there who are like, that turns me off a lot, standing on the edge of a step for 90 seconds. Um, you, some people don't even need to get to that stage of the, the restorative program. Um, and their symptoms have kind of abated and they're back to doing the full aspect of their life. Like some, some people after phase two might, um, uh, might say, okay, cool. I'm not having pain anymore when I wake up in the morning on the first few steps. Uh, when I get out of bed and for those folks, that's cool. Um, but when you're getting to the sixth phase of our program, most people's uh, chains, feet, calves, uh, hips start getting quite tired with the exercise that we're doing. That's a super uh, Let me be like clear to the fit heads because this video hasn't come out yet, but it's been four months of me going from like full squishy shoes to slowly 
just the right amount of suck training and, and progressing until now I'm doing two barefoot heights a week. And it's only like a couple miles still. I'm not like fully not so yet, but this has been over a long period of time and not hopefully overloading. Well, yeah. And that's like, that's an amazing point, right? Like you've been really structured, really thoughtful. And, uh, if you had have tried to get to where you were now on day one, it may not have gone as well. It may have, no. but it, it may not have. So I very much think no. <laughs> yeah. So that, um, and if you're training well, um, and if you're progressing well, the majority of the time you're not going to have injuries, but sometimes people get unlucky and, um, and stress can uh, accumulate. So we, um, we, I would strongly advocate for your type of leadership, Ellie, in terms of somebody progressing towards, yeah, 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 look at that. Um, you hear that, Max? I'm allowed to bring it up in conversation all the time. Daily. Daily, at least. <laughs> are you? But are you? Just one put of on the list. Are you, are you, are you, <laughs> Allie, have you turned into somebody who brings up barefoot training at every possible opportunity? What? No, I'm vegan. I bring that up first. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, it's just like it's just like it's just like she needs a sign that lights up behind it that says like attention, and that just flashes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's uh, that's that's I, how I, I visualize it. That's how I visualize it when these things come yeah. up. No, that, attention that's, uh, me that's i think that's a good sign attention, attention me. please attention me yeah, yeah whatever yeah. We'll, we'll workshop it but yeah. that's actually a good point are shoes are squishy shoes bad uh no the shoes are different right everybody's got different kind of feet um some people will go into a rocker sole shoe and um and feel great some people don't like a rocker sole shoe um everybody's got their own tastes uh, and if you're wearing super squishy shoes, does it mean that your foot strength is terrible? No. Um, you could be doing other things that are, that are helping it. But, um, if you're looking at the level of cush in, um, in your heel, some people love a super soft heel and like a, a fairly firm forefoot. Um, you'll be searching hard to find a pair of shoes like that, but it's all about energy return and all about volume and load so if you're wearing super super squishy shoes and you go into a pair of really hard shoes and go out for a run more than likely your body's going to say i don't like that whether it'll cause you an injury or not probably not but if you continually do it and don't allow your body to as ellie the uh, vegan barefoot runner has done such an amazing job of telling us about um I have business if, cards <laughs> and a website um if if you progressively do that, um, you're going to decrease the chance of your aggravation. But people love to hate on shoes, types of shoes. Um, Hoka is a brand of shoe at the moment that has um, taken the market by storm with their Rocker Soul or Rocker Technology. And even in their like lineup of shoes, they've got um, different types of Rocker Soles and different um, squishiness. So some of it comes down to preference and then some of it comes down to tolerance. It, so I want to, I, oh, I, I, just want, I just want to build on something like Luke, Luke said about 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 it depends and, and Max. I love I love the way you phrase that question. Like, are soft shoes bad? Yeah. I feel like the okay. I almost said the fitness industry, and yeah, fitness like is totally an industry uh, for for better or for worse. Fitness is a, is a state of being. It's like some you are either fit or you're or you're not for for what you need to do. But it's also like you know we're and we're we're in that industry. We're trying to sell products, but there's so many like shoulds out there, goods, bads, like whatever is it is it good or is it bad it comes down to are you able to do what you want to do so how you know are are your are, is being a barefoot runner good or bad i don't know do you want to be a barefoot runner if you want to be a barefoot runner then barefoot training is probably a good idea if you don't care about being able to be a barefoot runner no you don't like there's no there's no should on on your foot strength there's no like <laughs> you know <laughs> right you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying so the then like the the, the test is the activities that you love doing, can you do them without pain? And if you are wearing certain shoes and you're able to do the activities that you love to do and it's not causing you pain, it's not causing a problem, I would, you know, 
no, they're not bad. If it, if they start creating problems for you, then, then yeah, they are. But, but it's like the, I, I, it is a, um, it bums me out sometimes. So like that's a, that's a marketing tactic that's used really, really effectively is, uh, you know, this is good. This is bad. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. But if you work backwards from what am I trying to accomplish with my body and can I do that thing? For some pe- for the for Luke's patient that he was talking about, what they what really they wanted to do with their body was cook Thanksgiving dinner with their kids. So does she need to do phase six of the exercise of the alleviate exercise program? Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> that is, that is a, no, like honestly, like that that that's too much, that's too much gun for the fight that she She wants to cook on the edge of a step. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> She wants to cook on the edge of a step. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, she wants to cook on the edge of a step. Then absolutely, phase phase six is where is where she needs to go. But if, but really, for her, it's more about uh, you know four, four sets of twenty seconds of standing on two feet doing a turkey baster. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, just that just kind of uh, see. This is how I got sucked in because the barefoot shoes, which was my first step into being insufferable at parties, were were saying to me, "Oh, that the heels need to be." zero drop because you're going to have problems down the road if you have a heel strike that's causing issues up your chain or whatever and i was trying to be proactive but i just bought into the the hype i believe well I'm not, I'm not i'm not criticizing your just decision to be to be barefoot right because like you are you're receiving bare, you are receiving many benefits from having feet that are that strong and having a gait that is that natural it would be my point know, luke would you agree with that no, I haven't seen a gate. I've um, only I seen. Gate that's natural. I'm even wearing spacers right now. How stupid! I wear spacers all day now. It's is remarkable. that dumb? Well, Max, is what, I'm more interested in what Max has got to say about you showing well, I've, us I've your heard spacers. About the spacers. I've, <laughs> Have you seen them yet? Though, I've Max? seen them. Yeah, I've seen them every every single time. Yeah, because he goes on Wiki Feed. Someone just screenshotted what I just did. It's going up. <laughs> Who? But but I think that's a good point. Is that a lot of times you you hear that oh you know you, you're supposed to do blah 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 and it usually accompanies by this type of product. You're supposed you're not supposed to do uh, whey protein isolate. You're supposed to do whey protein. You know what I mean? It's it's all this thing. There's all this like oh you know you're supposed to blah blah, and it's sort of a a, a tough sort of spiral cycle, I guess. What I would say is I think a lot of people, what they want is they don't want to be doing something that would, that, that down the line will hurt them or cause something like, man, why is my back so sore? And it's like, oh, you're supposed to sleep flat or or, or on your back or on your side or hanging upside down or whatever, you know? So I guess since you guys are feet, feet guys, are there things that you see a lot of the time? um activities that do sort of i mean obviously it's, it's pretty hard to tell but are, are, when you see people come in are there common things that a lot of people do that do cause injury down the line so rick's probably the main foot guy like he's he's really into feet not that it's a competition <laughs> no no whatever uh, website you were talking about before he's probably on it um so His license take- plate says footman <laughs> <laughs> Dr. your soul 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 man obviously yeah there we go Is a soul patch yeah. i um i'll leave this one to you rick how would you leave that to me i'm not a practicing physical therapist you're a practicing <laughs> physical therapist it was more of a lead about you being a foot guy because he said that both yeah, of you yeah, are yeah, foot yeah. guys um are there things that are going to lead you to having foot dysfunction things that you should avoid what are, what are like common things that you see? Obviously everybody's different. I'll give you an example. Uh, I see a lot of people walking on inclined treadmills for 30 minutes, medium to sometimes medium, sometimes slowish. And I just, I don't know. I wonder if uh, it seems like a lot of stress in a very uh, shortening, flexed. Yeah. Shortening your, um, your gait stride. So are you loading tissue more or are you loading the joints more? Sure. Um, but they're probably walking quite slowly. So uh, when you're running next to the max, that's probably um, uh, an equal amount of load going through those joints, right? If you look at it cumulatively. Mm-hmm. But things that are associated with plantar fasciitis, um, gains in weight, 
occupations where there's a huge amount of standing, barber, police officer, uh, some teachers, nurses. Um, shoe gear is, I think, the technical term, and shoe gear that's old and has no support in it. Like if you've degraded what you rely upon for support and your support system, Again, with the hands loop, if you've decreased the um, support of your shoes and you're not changing them, they're kind of just worn, completely worn, maybe have a look at that. If you're thinking about getting into any kind of exercise program, um, do it progressively. And if you want some kind of guide, um, refer to Ali's um, almost biblical uh, progression into uh, barefoot training. <laughs> and... So uh, we want to we want to be quite clear. Like for our particular field or for our company, we're taking one pathology that's chronic that affects a huge amount of people that affects their lives, and it stops them from being able to do that. And we're being quite thoughtful, like as a company, to choose specific pathologies and not just say, "If you have foot pain, we're going to fix it." No, if you've got heel pain, if you've got arch pain, if you've got plantar fasciitis, like we are going to show you how to resolve that. So does everybody need to um, use our system? No. Our foot massager, if you're going out and training and building into something like this, it's an excellent tool to decrease that tension in your feet. Um, but things such as, as I said, standing for long periods of time, gaining weight, um, modifications in training, Surface training on different surfaces, those are all things that can potentially lead to creating dysfunction and or plantar fasciitis in your feet. And so as a proactive thing, prophylactic, Max, that's a real word. It is, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> it's on wiki um, New Zealish. <laughs> that I can, I can be using this arch massager as I start working to being a barefoot runner, not just hiker. I don't think I'm actually going to do that, by the way. So um, foam rolling, like how long has that been around? A while, but not forever, right? Okay. Um, Seems <laughs> recently popular. Yeah. In so every, everybody rolls and, um, and they <laughs> roll. To, <laughs> everybody foam rolls. Might want to edit that one, Max. Um, <laughs> and they foam roll tight tissue, hip flexors, calves, um, some people will lie on it. And that's to try and decrease some of the tension that is built up from either life training or um, progressive amounts of stress that you put through your body. What do people do for their feet? Nothing really. And where does every, um, every initiation of movement come from? It's either inversion or like moving forward with your heels. So, People are I'm bench it. pressing everywhere. Excuse me. Oh, uh, yeah. You and Rick. <laughs> um, yeah, shirts get smaller, don't they? So the um, you have to see that one, people. It's not, just not verbal. She's joking, but <laughs> we did bear crawl down a hallway the other day just to see, yeah. who, <laughs> see who would do it for longer. So, yeah, I think that's fair to say. But even there, like you're putting stress through your feet, right? And now you've yeah. gone instead sure. of bipedal you've got quadruped and so oh you've got different stress going through and are you likely to bang up your hands or shoulders beforehand eh, probably but um some people can't do that they can't get up onto their tiptoes to be able to do like a bear crawl um so in terms of like preventing some of that tension that's going to build up if you are um progressing towards a barefoot training and or you've just started trail running instead of always running on the road or you're running on a sprung track or you're playing basketball on a sprung court or you're going from playing on concrete to uh, hard court and tennis like all of those surfaces are so different and your foot and ankle complex has to um, tolerate a massive amount of change are you going to foam roll your feet some people might use a golf ball. Some people might use a lacrosse ball. But um, we've got data to prove that our uh, foot massage will help um, decrease tension and decrease aggravation that's going to build up in your feet. Yes, I have used it, fit heads. And <laughs> it is definitely different than a lacrosse ball. You can dig up in there. It just feels like even 
just more blood flow afterwards. That like satisfying feeling when you're done. Definitely different than a lacrosse ball. Yeah, and if I may, um, digging up in there is like a really uh, apt description. We might put that as a banner on our website if if you give you're us welcome. the okay. Yes, uh, rights released. If you think about like um, when you're trying to change something, um, a lacrosse ball rolls with the tissue, right? And our foot massager stays static and your foot moves over the top of it. So you kind of grind that tissue. So if you think about pizza dough, you're rolling it out. So that's a real point of difference for our foot massager is that it stays static. Your foot moves. It breaks down that tension and the tissue. Yes, you're right. It also um, improves the blood flow into your foot. Um, but instead of something that moves with your tissue, it's actively trying to break down the problematic tissue that is there. If you've got normal tissue, it just glide straight up over the top of it cool feels nice but when you hit those spots so when you hit those spots that are tight um you'll be like oh i felt that and then you go over it again <laughs> and you go oh i felt that again and then after two three minutes you're like i don't feel that as much that's weird and then you get up and stand up and go, oh that doesn't cause me as much tension and or pain if you had it before yeah you were talking about this earlier that you will have people use the system and then test to see that it's done something that I know from taking supplements that you just have to do a thing for a really long time and never ask if it's doing anything. Oh, I think that's the key to all relationships, just not challenging yourself, you know, um, and also probably not reflecting. So what we're trying to do is um, create an accountability measure, if you will, by taking data at the beginning of your exposure, um, go do it. Do it for five to seven days. Um, come back and retest. Even better than that, like if you can't walk on your heels or you have pain when you're walking, use our massager and we would challenge you, use it for three, four minutes, and then we would challenge you to do whatever it is that you can't do again. And um, if your pain hasn't reduced, uh, shoot us an email and send it back to us. Like we're yeah, but I have to pay for shipping. No. <gasps> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not here to sell like stuff that doesn't work. Like it will if you use this the right way for a short period of time, it's going to decrease your pain or discomfort. So if that is not like a uh, a hook, um, and we're putting like our um, well, basically we have to pay for it all, right? So. We wouldn't sell it if it was shit. I, 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 have, this, I have this very firm belief that that people uh, that companies should not sell products that don't work, and people shouldn't buy products that they You're can't tell if they're destroying the entire vitamin supplement industry, sir. Well, that stuff you can pee out real quickly. Unfortunately, you can't pee out a massager. Uh, maybe some people can, <laughs> but uh, you just got to use the massager. And, um, and that will probably help you. I love that mentality. Mm. It's crazy. So you see transformations that quickly, the two, th three to five minutes, and people will see a difference. Yeah. So what we tried to do was replicate, like, what I do on people and uh, chronic people who have had pain for, like, a long period of time uh, come in, you work on them, and immediately they should have a decrease in pain or discomfort. And um, and we worked with an amazing designer and um, we we're really fortunate to get this product. It's in the hands of a lot of people and it in decreases the feet, their pain. You mean? Oh, that was, that was <laughs> okay. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on because I've got a strong suspicion that that might be edited out. So, um, <laughs> but it sucks when but, Max is in charge of the episode, none of my puns make it in. <laughs> that's the opening. Oh, that's just your opinion. <laughs> um, oh, so, God. yeah, good. So, if you use this, it decreases your pain. Yeah, we're staking our, um, we're backing that. Um, so we want you to, uh, to buy this with reckless abandon, to use it <laughs> with structured <laughs> non-abandon and see the difference that it makes. And, um, 
yeah, people waking up and saying, oh, this, like, I don't have pain in my feet after progressing through the system or I'm noticing a difference in, uh, in the pain um, immediately is uh, that's why we do this. That's what makes me super happy. And that's what, um, what gets us going as a, as a unit. Like all of our um, team has the same mission to like decrease people's pain. Here we go. One step at a time. Oh God. Yes. Yes. But if we can like, do that um, person by person, you advocate for this product and you tell the next person, you tell the next person. Cause if, as Rick said, if you go to, into a room of like a bunch of people start talking about your plantar fasciitis, somebody else is going to pop off that they've had it too. Um, I would argue, Ali, in fact, that your, your question was something like, do you really see a, uh, a change that quickly? I would argue that if you don't see a change that quickly, it's not going to be successful, especially if you're dealing with somebody who's had chronic pain. Because somebody who has chronic pain, and I'm making a blanket statement that doesn't apply to everybody all the time, but it certainly applied to me when I had chronic pain. I lost belief that anything could work. Wow. Like I, I had gotten to the point where I was just like, oh, part of my life is I have this knee pain now. And I had accepted it. And I had accepted that, okay, I was never going to skate again. I was never going to run more than 5K again. And that was my mindset. And not to blow a bunch of smoke up Luke's uh new zealand word but chimney. uh chimney <laughs> but not to blow a bunch of smoke. okay now no, no, i'll make it so we can fix this in post not to make it not to blow a bunch of smoke up luke's chimney but um when when i saw him as 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 a patient and he was my he was my therapist he did produce a tangible noticeable functional change in the first session and that was in stark contrast to everybody else I'd seen who had said, okay, your problem is X. And then they printed out a bunch of line drawings and they were like, this is your homework now. And what Luke did is he put, he took his elbow and he put it in an extraordinarily uncomfortable spot in the, at the, the, the base of my, where my knee kind of meets the inside of my thigh. And it didn't feel great, but I'll be darned if when I got off the table and he said, squat with your heels off the ground, I could squat deeper. So you have this, this, it's the, you have this tangible thing where it's like, oh my God, I did something and my function changed. And if you've been in pain for years and then something happens where you can actually do something different as a result of an intervention that took a couple of minutes, you start to believe again, oh my gosh, maybe, I, maybe something will work. And then, and, and then, then that will get you, okay, maybe if I do this two minutes a day, if do this, maybe if I use this like funny shaped foot smusher tool, two minutes a day, first thing when I get out of bed and Ab Ali, I, I think you want to probably talk about like habit stacking or something, but like, <laughs> maybe if I, if I put my, if I put my arch massager by my, by my bed and I literally, my feet don't touch the floor until I lotion up my feet and put two minutes on the arch massager, I will notice that my first steps will feel better. And then that will that will start to build this, this belief in you that you can change because you can, but if you get into a mental space where you don't believe you can change it, you know, it, that, that like cliched expression about, you know, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Uh, really is, is true. The technical term is self-efficacy. The, the folksy term is whether you believe you can or you can't. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty remarkable. The, the mental shift and that so many people it just seems like so commonly chronic that people kind of give up on thinking they'll get somewhere yeah and so what we're um i keep going back to this data thing but like ultimately uh that's where the true power is and if we can show that this works for people um across different demographics across uh, different ages etc um we can show that it can help you and if you buy into the program or you're accountable for the program we'll be accountable for your success imagine now, if you will the world imagine trying to do weight loss before the invention of the scale <laughs> how hard would it be to stick to a weight loss uh, weight loss regime if there if literally there was no way to measure your weight Mm. You, you, you couldn't notice that you'd made a change in your, in your body mass until either your clothes fit different 
or your body was so you had lost so much weight that your body felt different or like something, but the scale lets you measure in small increments. And so this, this, these data that Luke keep talking about, we have these funny little walks that we have people do. Can I don't know if you, can you see this <laughs> stuff? Yes. So we have people like stand on their heels and walk a couple steps forward and walk a couple steps back and then Very lock into their mind. Then. What's that? <laughs> Play yeah, Monty the, Python. Right, right. No, exactly. The game change. You, the ga okay, you, you heard you heard it here. What, what was the first thing we heard here first? You're American. Oh, I'm an American. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we first thing we've we've established is America. The second thing is the game changing innovation in chronic pain management is the Ministry of Silly Walks. Uh, from you know, I, I don't know. I, I hope I hope your audience uh, is likely enough to watch Monty Python that they'll at least chuckle at that. Um, but. <laughs> But so if, if you do this, like this walk forward on your heels, walk forward and walk backwards on your heels, and you kind of lock into your mind, what did that feel like? Scale of zero to 10, did that produce pain? And, and if so, at what level? Then you do two to three minutes on the massager using, using lotion, and you kind of let your, you let your body tell you where, where to go. You find the hot spots and you, you apply pressure, not to the point where you're in extreme pain, but to the point where you've, you, you can tell that it's doing something. Wipe the lotion off your foot, do the walk on your heels forward, walk on your heels back again, and just be like, is the number different? Is it better, is it better, worse, or the same as it was before? If it's not, that doesn't work. Um, and these types, like that's that's like the coolest thing is that you get this immediate feedback loop that tells you this is this is working, this is helping me. The exercise is, is not as responsive it takes a little bit more it does like it's not going to you're not going to get the same tissue change because like luke said you can't get stronger or weaker in one intervention that takes a week or two to actually feel the feel the results but with the soft tissue work of the of the the grinding that's immediate yeah. and so that's like well, that's a Very big cool. reason we start people there is because they can they have that belief they have that aha moment that's like right. oh my gosh i there's there might there, there might be a better way yeah, you went from thinking that it was impossible you'd be always be in pain to now. A, is that a standing desk? Are you at a standing desk, sir? Is that on am your I, business card? <laughs> <laughs> I am. Well, I'm at. A, I am at. I'm at a standing desk. Yes, sort of. I'm at a. I'm at a desk with a computer that's on top of a bucket. Huh. Nice. Yeah. Frugal. Talk about ergonomics. I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is awesome. I got to, I got to go do the 90 second test again and, and start smushing some more. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Right. Really appreciate it. And where can the fit heads go learn more about alleviate and the whole system? Alleviate therapy.com. I thought you were going to say it. <laughs> they can go to alleviate. Thank <laughs> This yeah okay. You can go to alleviatetherapy.com. That's our website. Uh, you can you can learn about our system and, and check out our products, or you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, it's at alleviate underscore therapy. Love it. And if you have any questions, shoot us an email info at alleviatetherapy.com. We're more than happy Ooh. to uh, engage with our uh, public. And um, again, we're all about accountability. If you reference the show, either Luke or I will respond. If you don't reference the show, all bets are off. Yeah, no, I don't know. Some, <laughs> Tell them you're a fithead. Some... Fitheads. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you if you if you write info at alleviatetherapy.com and you say you're a fithead, uh, you you will get a, you will get a personal response from Luke <laughs> or myself. Aww. amazing. Whether you want or not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, awesome. And thank you so much to the Fitheads. If you can rate and review on Apple Podcasts, that helps us out a whole lot. And we'll see you next week.